What is up guys, Doug Polk here, and we're back for another episode of Poker Hands. And today we're going back in time to the 2014 one drop, the million dollar buy-in, for a hand that I'm at the table for, but not involved in. Let's kick it off here, pre-flop. Tables, Daniel Coleman has the action, 9-7 off, it raised to 220,000 Ivy Folds. White is the new black line in white t-shirts tonight. Coleman, Noah Schwartz, Connor Drynan, Sam Trickett, Rick Solomon. Action folded to Daniel Negreanu in the small blind. Ace four of hearts calls for 170,000 more. UK venture capitalist Paul Newey says he likes to play with Negreanu. You know, you hardly ever see any venture socialists. <laughs> Just venture capitalists, good point. King queen off for Newey. He sees a raise from Coleman, a call from Negreanu. And the big blind puts in an additional 120 more and three will see the flop. Our hand begins with Dan Coleman coming in for a raise from the hijack with 9-7 off. Now, if you've seen any of my videos before, you already know what I'm going to say about this open. It is way too loose and definitely not a hand you want to open in the hijack. Now, I know one of the reasons he's doing this is because Paul Newey's in the big blind. He thinks he can try and maybe get him off some hands. Paul Newey's a bit of a tighter player. But at the same time, this is way too loose and you really don't want to be opening this wide. The action folds into Grano in the small blind with ace four suited, and now he really has two options. He can call, which is the very conservative option, and take a flop with enough equity against his, uh, his opponent's range, totally a reasonable play, or he can go ahead and three bet, which I generally prefer. His hand has good equity when called, he has an ace in his hand, so his opponent's less likely to have strong hands, and additionally ace four will break a lot of flops, so getting your opponent to fold pre-flop is a pretty good result. You also get the added benefit of knocking the big blind out. Now, when that's new, it's not as valuable as with some other players, like, you know, maybe this guy over here. But at the same time, it still matters. Anyway, he likes to call, which is conservative but fine. And new in the big blind has king queen. Now, king queen looks like a very strong hand when you're in the big blind. But three betting is going to put you in some dicey spots. What do you do facing a four bet? You really don't know. You probably have to fold, which seems a bit wasteful with a hand as strong as king queen. So Nui calls, and we take a flop. The flop is eight, nine, ace, two spades. Negranu flops an ace and checks. Nui missed. Coleman with middle pair. Yeah, Paul, he checked. I think he really should check, too. There you go. Now Coleman, who got a piece of that flop. And like any heads-up specialist and any no-limit specialist, you hit the flop, and usually you bet it. 250000 Coleman with middle pair, Negrano with top pair. And Daniel, with that pair of aces, deciding the perfect amount to put in, and that's a check raise to 650. Newey folded, back to Coleman. Coleman finished third at this year's World Series 10K Heads Up Championship. Heads up right now with Kid Poker. Boy, this 23-year-old is stubborn. He makes the call for 400,000 more. So the flop comes ace-9-8 with two spades and one club, and the action checks over to Coleman, as it should. Coleman now has a decision to make with his middle payer bad kicker, but he really should be checking this back. If you bet in the flop, your opponents can put you in tough spots by raising. If you get called, you're not entirely sure where you're at. It doesn't really have a lot of benefits. One of the few things it does do for you is make people fold hands like Nui has here with King Queen because he's not going to think he's going to be good enough to call. But, you know, Nui only has 25% equity against you. It's not really that valuable. Particularly in a three-way pot, it gets a lot worse because now two players can have you beat and whenever you're beat, you're getting some action. So I'm not a big fan. Also, when you face a check raise, it puts you in a really tough spot. Speaking of facing a check raise, after this one-third pot size bet from Coleman, action on Negranu, and he elects to make it 650k with ace four. I really don't like this, because now, sure, you're going to make Nui fold almost always, unless he has you beat, but it's not really that relevant, because Nui's likely to have a weak hand. But now, think about the way Coleman's going to play against this check raise. He's going to continue with every ace that has you beat, which, by the way, is almost all aces, and they're all going to bet the flop. And then he's also going to continue with some hands like draws, where your hand's going to play very poorly on the turn river. 
I mean, really, when you make this small raise, you're hoping that he either has a hand like jacks or a nine or some kind of draw and that the board will break out in a safe way where you can show down. That's not always going to be the case. Additionally, it leads me to believe that when Negreanu calls here on the flop, he's going to be very weak. What hand is Negreanu going to check call if he's going to raise a top pair this bad? Is it just going to be nines? Is it just going to be eights? Well, what's he going to do against a turn barrel? What's he going to do against three barrels? How is he going to plan different runouts? Is he just going to give up? Is he just going to call down a middle pair? You can see the problem here. If he's going to raise every top pair in the flop, what happens to his range when he calls? It's just garbage. So I really dislike this race from Negreanu. That said, because Coleman made too light of a bet on the flop for value, despite the small size, it's going to work out pretty amazing here. Nui folds and the action's back on Coleman. Now, he has to basically call, I mean, he has a pair, he's getting great odds, it's a small size raise, he's going 400k, or doing about 1.6 million if he does call. So, you know, it, it's not, it's not really, sorry, it's actually the pot's going to be a little bit more than that, the pot will end up being, uh, 2 million roughly if he decides to call. So, you know, it's not really clear cut, but with, with a pair, you kind of have to just call and play turns and rivers. Especially with 9-7 with a spade, you can turn a flush draw, you can turn some open enders. So Coleman calls, and let's take the turn. Four of spades, a third spade out there. Daniel with aces up. Coleman picked up a flush draw. Well, Daniel not worried by that third spade. That's 775000 Coleman won this year's 100K EPT Monte Carlo High Roller with $2.1 beating Dan Cates heads up. Quite an accomplishment indeed. Any time you get by Jungle Man. So Coleman with a flush draw. And one of the problems I would think he would have, Norman, is it's, even if he hits his flush, it's only seven high. But he does call. The turn comes the four of spades, somewhat bailing Kid Poker out. But the flush does get in, so he has to be worried about some hands like Jack-10 of spades, 7-6 of spades, King-Jack of spades, those types of holdings. However, now his hand is much stronger and definitely able to value bet. You know, if he decided to check-raise the flop with a hand like Ace-9 or Ace-8 or even 9-8, I would be okay with all those hands. They're strong hands that can get some value. But imagine if he has Ace-5, Ace-3, or Ace-2 here. You know, any other Ace, weak Ace that check-raises. What's he planning on doing on the turn four. What's he going to be able to, you know, how is he going to play this hand? Is he going to check call? Well, you could, but it gets really dicey because your opponent could bet better aces. They could bet turns of bluff and barrel you off in the river with some brick straight draws. And then when they have flushes, they're going to value bet. Are you going to just let him win with the bluffs? Are you just going to value bet? Are you, are you just going to call him down and lose to the flushes? I mean, here's the real problem. How are you going to operate? Now, I guess you will also have those stronger hands. So you can maybe make the argument, okay, Doug, Let's play by the range analysis. We'll let ace five go here. We'll let ace three go here because we have these stronger hands. But then the problem is, if you're gonna check raise something and then check fold, why not use a hand that is actually a bad hand instead of top pair? Doesn't really make sense. Anyway, moving on, Negrano decides to go ahead and bet 800,000 into about two million. A little smaller than I like to see, but does make some sense. Coleman now has a decision to make with his middle pair and weak flush draw. And you can see one of the reasons why this hand makes a bad flop bet because you get in these spots in later streets. Now, when he faces a bet this small, you almost have to just call even if you think Negrano is not really bluffing because just the chance you hit a 9 or a 7 or a spade, it's so good when they bet 800k here. You're going to call 800k to win a pot of about 3.6 million. You're only going to need like 22% equity or 23% equity to call that bet. And even if your opponent mainly has hands like two pair, you're going to just have the equity to hit trips or a flush. Then when you also factor in your opponent might have a bluff and give up, you definitely have to call. So Negranu bets, Coleman calls, and we're taking a river. A red tray. So Negranu officially has the best of it. Daniel running low on funds. He started the hand with just three and a half million and puts in one and a quarter million there. Negrano bets just more than one third of the pot. If you're Coleman, you might think it's possible Daniel has a busted straight draw. Daniel's favorite hand is 10-7. So a pair of nines might have been good the whole way. Coleman started the hand with 12.6 million. 
The river comes in offsuit three, and Negreanu has to be very happy about the way this worked out. He didn't get raised on the flop. He didn't get raised on the turn. And a nice safe river means two pair is definitely a hand that he can value bet. He's putting Coleman on hands more like ace, king, ace, queen, ace, jack, ace, ten right now than a nine. But he still wants to try and get some value. The problem is he can't really bet huge because if he does, he'll end up getting action from hands like sets and flushes and better two pairs. So he decides to go with a size of about one third pot. I think that I would probably prefer him to just check the river instead of putting him on like a strong ace. Because if Coleman plays this correctly, here's how he can play. He can fold weak aces, or weak to middling aces. He can raise with some aces as a bluff that have a spade in them to try and rip a flush. Like let's say he has a hand like ace 10 with a 10 of spades or ace jack with a jack of spades. Well, he can now put, go all in and put Negreanu in a tough spot with hands like two pair or sets or whatever. So if he does that, and then, yeah, sometimes calls with some strong aces, like ace, queen, and ace, king, Negreanu's only really getting paid by a few hands. Ace, king, ace, queen, maybe some ace jacks. Meanwhile, Negreanu, meanwhile, Coleman can have flushes, he can have two pair, he can have sets. You know, there's a lot of hands that have Negreanu beat. So... All in all, I think I'd prefer to see a check as played on the river. And over to Coleman, I, I like his fold. I mean, this is one of the worst hands you can really even have here, which makes it always a good candidate to fold even versus small bets. But raising could also be somewhat reasonable. I think I prefer fold like he did and maybe picking some hands with an ace in them uh, with a high spade kicker to turn to a bluff and raise. But you should also be aware that you want to raise here as a bluff because if you have a hand like a flush, you're going to want to mix in some bluffs with hands that aren't that strong and represent the flush with the same way that you would also have the flush. Okay, You want to always have that balance of bluff and value. What the heck is that? Is that how you fold heads up online? No offense, Norman Chad, but you might want to stick to the ex-wife jokes. Busted flush draw and second pair into the muck, and Daniel will take a much needed pot. Thank you for joining me here today for Poker Hands. I'll see you guys tomorrow. By the way, I want to take a quick moment to thank everyone. This has been the best week my channel's ever had in views, in subs, in likes, in comments. And I want you to know that I appreciate that. And let's build this guy together.